This week, learn how to recreate this classic categorical convective outlook map from SBC by using the experimental shape files they're producing, GeoPandas and Cartopi. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. On this week's MetPy Monday, I wanted to take a look at the experimental shape files that the SBC has been producing of their categorical outlook, the tornado, wind, hail, and so on. So this is the map that I'm going to try to reproduce. Notice down here this legend in the corner. We'll come back to that as we go further into making our map. If you go to sbc.noaa.gov GIS, you can get links to all of the KMZ and shape files that they're producing. I'm going to be using this day one, two, three convective outlook shape files. So we replace in the brackets one, two, three with whichever day we want. In this case, I just got day one. So this is a zip. I download the zip file, unzipped it into the same directory where my notebooks are or moved its contents to where my notebooks are. And now we'll go ahead and pop over to the notebook and try to read those files and do some manipulation. I'm going to go ahead and import matplotlib, import geopandas. If you don't have geopandas already, you can conda install geopandas. Then from Cartopi, import CRS as CCRS, import Cartopi.feature as C feature. And finally, don't forget your map plot lib inline magic so that our plots show up in the notebook. Reading in the shape file you might think would be pretty complicated, but it's actually one line. The rest of what we're going to do is the complicated part. So I'm going to call it categorical GDF for geopandas data frame. So we use geopandas.read file. Notice I'm using my tab completion to speed up typing and to explore the available functionality. Again, I'm going to use tab completion so I don't have to find the exact shape file I want. So I'm going to type day one tab. And this shows me all of the different day one something files in this directory. Tornado, wind, significant wind, significant tornado, significant hail, hail. But we want the categorical here. So I run that cell, and just like that, we have the categorical day one read in. If we look at what this is, it looks pretty much just like a pandas data frame. This is a, uh, a category number from SBC. We'll talk more about that later. Valid and expire times. And then these are the actual polygons that represent those boxes or shapes we saw on the map. This GeoPandas data frame does know how to plot itself. So you might say, well, this is going to be pretty easy. There it is, but that's really not all that useful. Uh, we don't have the different categories colored differently. You see that this is Florida down here, so the map is kind of sideways, which tells us there might be something funny going on with the projection. And projections, as we know, are a lot of times no fun. So let's take a look at what GeoPandas is able to learn about the projection information along with this shapefile. So cat gdf.crs. So this is a dictionary, as we see by the curly braces. It's Lambert Conic Conformal Projection. Our standard parallels are 33 and 45. And our central parallel is 0. So we have a zero lat and zero lon. So that explains why, that along with the standard parallels, why things look a little bit strange. So we need to do some projection magic and get this into a more normal conus view. So let's go ahead and make some projections. For my map coordinate reference system, I want the normal view of conus, so ccrs.lambertconformal. The 
central latitude. Remember, you can tab complete on these keyword arguments as well. Uh, so central latitude is going to be 35. Central longitude is going to be minus 100. And the standard parallels are going to be 30 and 60. Now let's go ahead and make a data CRS as well. So CCRS dot Lambert conformal. Now we could hard code these things, but why not pull them out of the CRS information that GeoPand has parsed? So central latitude is cat GDF dot CRS lat underscore zero central longitude similarly cat gdf dot crs lawn underscore zero i'm going to go ahead and line wrap here standard parallels we'll pass a tuple cat gdf cat gdf dot CRS and this is going to be lat underscore one cat GDF dot CRS lat underscore two okay so that creates our two projections and we need to have quotes around that since it's a string and quotes around this one since it's a string. Okay, there we go. So we've retrieved those values using these keys from this dictionary. This is nice because should those values ever change, your code will adapt. It doesn't just break. The next thing that we need to do is since we're going to want to make a map and have those colored much like they are here, I'm going to make a dictionary that has the that DN number and the color. Now for a reason that I don't quite know, this is starting at number two. So DN2 would be thunderstorm three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's go ahead and make that color dictionary. I'm gonna call it cat plot colors. So the key is two. That one is going to be pale green. For a key of three, green. For a key of four, yellow. For a key of five, brown. Six, red. Seven, magenta. Now we're finally ready to make a map. I'm going to create a figure, plot.figure. And my fig size is going to be 14 by 12. I'm going to create an axis. One row, one column, first pane. And the projection is going to be my map CRS. So that's what we want the map to be in. Now I'm going to set the extent to be the conus view. So minus 130 to minus 72 in longitude and 20 to 55 in latitude. And those are in plat curie, or basically just lat long coordinate reference systems. Let's add some features. So we're going to add a feature, C feature dot coastline, and I'm going to use it with scale of 1 to 50 million. If some of these Cartopie things are, are new to you, I encourage you to go back and look at some of our prior MetPy Mondays, where we've talked a lot about Cartopie. So we're going to use states with the same scale, 1 to 50 million. So let's go ahead and run that cell. 
and make sure we get what we want. Yeah, so this looks like the map projection that I was expecting. It's got about the right bounds, and we have states and coastlines, which are useful. So now let's add our new things from SBC. So I want to go over each of these keys and see if we have any polygons for those. So I'm going to say for key in cat plot colors dot keys. The geometries associated with that key are going to be our cat geopendus data frame, where in that data frame, the DN value is equal to our key. Now I only want to do a plot if there are some geometries there. So if len of geometries is greater than zero, so only if there is a polygon for that type, maybe it's not a high risk day, most days aren't, so we're not going to have anything to plot there, then we call add geometries we get that geometries uh, data frame and we want to plot the geometry data series if you will from it those polygons the coordinate reference system is our data coordinate reference system for face color I'm going to get the color from our cat plot colors using the key that we're currently on. For the edge color, I'm going to plot them all with black edge colors. And I'm going to prescribe an alpha of 50%, so half opaque, half translucent. And if we run that cell, there we go. We have a map that is remarkably close to the map here on the Storm Prediction Center website. With a little bit more tweaking, we could certainly get this to look almost exactly the same. We have our thunderstorms in the pale, we have our marginal, and we have our slights. So I hope that you found this useful. It's just a very brief introduction to what you can do with a few lines of GeoPandas, Cartopi, and Matplotlib. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.